So hello gamers and welcome back to another Counter-Strike 2 video. I'm currently working on my sniper video that should hopefully be out within the week, but in the meantime I decided I would do a tier list for all the weapons in CS2. The sniper video is pretty crazy, I learned stuff that's not even like anywhere on the wiki and I don't know if it's like a new thing for CS2 but nobody's ever mentioned it, which is that the auto snipers can actually one shot abdomen in like, you have to stick the barrel into the dude. Okay. Anyways, first gun, the AUG. The AUG is an interesting weapon because it was pretty good. They've just made it more expensive again, but the other small nerfs they've done to it really just make it not worth the price anymore. It is the most expensive assault rifle in the game, which is unfortunate, and I'd probably say there are better options. It's not an awful gun, it's just really not too good or anything. Next up, the AWP. Obviously, it's a top tier gun. I don't really have to explain this one. Yeah, it's only got five rounds now, but it can one shot to anything upwards of the legs. That is armor or not, like it can one shot to the pinky finger, it doesn't matter. It just can't be the legs, which is unfortunate, but honestly, the legs are a hitbox that you don't often hit with a sniper rifle, so you won't really notice. I think a new player probably would think this gun was always a one-shot, even to the legs, but it's not. But it's not really that big of a deal. Moving on to CZ, uh, this gun used to be so much better. It is definitely awful. It has basically no reserve ammo. The reload is really slow. The magazine is pretty small. It empties its magazine in like 1.2 seconds, because it's only got 12 rounds and as much fire rate as the AK-47 at 600 RPM. A couple of people were talking about how they liked it personally in the comments of my pistol guide video and I can kind of understand it but honestly like the reduced kill reward the fact that it can't one shot headshot like the 57 can and the fact that it's 500 bucks I think if they reduced the price to like 400 maybe even 300 but that might be way too much or just changed it in some other way maybe it would be better but yeah it's not very good the desert eagle on the other hand I don't know if I should put it in top tier but it is 700 bucks the reason I'm contemplating one of these two is that this gun is more expensive than any other pistol of course and also it's terrible on the pistol round because it and the p250 have the same one hit kill head when somebody doesn't have a helmet so there's really no reason to use it on a pistol round and you know it's a pistol so it's supposed to be good on pistol round too obviously not every pistol is good for pistol round but this one is especially not good but still it's 700 bucks and you can one tap people to the head at nearly any range so i don't know probably pretty good i put it top tier i do understand why people would put it lower but yeah i think it's probably top tier next up we have the dual berettas now i really want to put these in one of these two spots definitely more towards this spot, but I'm not gonna lie, the armor pen on these guns in the range, it really does not make these a very good option at all for anything past pistol round. But pistol round, if you have a great spot like the boost on Vertigo, I will kill like three or four people every single time I do that correctly. But because they're really not any good past the pistol round, I can't really put them in great, right? I put them in decent just because for the pistol round, they are absolutely top tier, but past that, they're really not. Next up, AK, obviously this is going to go above the op. The op is better in certain scenarios, of course, but it's the AK it can one tap headshot the recoil is really not that bad the accuracy is pretty good like tapping is very accurate it's a really really good gun next up famas i don't know if i should put this in awful because like i guess i can put it in there are better options right maybe even decent i don't know it's definitely gonna be down here but not awful it is definitely the worst assault rifle in the game even the aug and the sg553 are better if you can pick them up off the ground but it's less expensive so yeah it is good for that but if you find a galil on the ground Pick up a Galil, dude. 5.7, definitely a great pistol because it can one-tap armored opponents in close range, which is really good. I think it's decent on pistol round. I still wouldn't buy it on pistol round because, you know, the one-tap range on unarmored is the same as the Glock, so there's really no reason to use it on a pistol round, but I would definitely recommend it on a save round. If you're gonna spend, you know, 200 bucks more than a P250 and be able to one-tap people, it's really good, and the recoil is really good as well. Next up, G3, awful. Um, Should I put it lower than the CZ. Actually, it's it's probably lower than the CZ. The reason that this is probably the worst gun in the game, well, until we get to more guns later down this list probably, is the fact that it's 5,000 bucks, but it doesn't really one-shot, and it's really not great at all for anything other than holding angles. The auto snipers are great for holding rushes and stuff. Not that you should use them. There's kind of an agreement in this game that you're not really supposed to use the auto snipers ever, so just don't even equip them. But if you really had to use them, the G3 is bad because it's on the T side, which means you're attacking people. And if you don't one-shot people, it's not really good. You know, you want an AK or something so you can spray. Something you can more run and gun. This is really great for holding angles, but yeah, uh, also the scar is better even when you compare the two. On hostage maps, I'd probably put this more towards great or something, but people play only defuse. I play hostage occasionally, but yeah, I don't I don't really uh, recommend you use this other than hostage, and even then, come on, don't use an auto sniper. Moving on to the Galil. The Galil isn't great. I'd say it's probably up here. I can't really put it in top tier, but 1800 bucks, uh, and it's very good for 1800 bucks. It's obviously not the best 
best assault rifle in the game, but that's not really what you're buying it for. You're buying it for the fact that it's the cheapest rifle, and it's better than the FAMAS. I'd probably use it maybe over the AUG and the SG553, and it costs like half as much as the AUG, so yeah, buy two Galils. I know they're not on the same team, but you get what I mean, right? Next up, the Glock. There are better options. It's not awful, and the reason I'm not gonna say it's awful is because, one, it's free. On the T side, I usually just buy armor because the Glock is really good. The fire rate is very, very good for tapping people. The recoil is very low. The accuracy isn't the best, and the one hit kill range isn't the best, but get close range and the running accuracy will just save your life. You can mow down the entire team. It's almost like a budget version of the dual Berettas. The dual Berettas are pretty similar in terms of like overall accuracy, but you get more fire rate, you get more rounds, and you get more damage with those, so they're obviously better, but next up, M249. I'm gonna put this below the G3 because one, it's more expensive. Two, it literally has nothing good to it. The only thing I can kinda get from it is that it can one-shot headshot on armor, which sounds pretty cool, but it's only to like the same range as the AUG, which probably don't even know the AUG in one tap, but watch my rifle video if you want to know about all those guns. But yeah, other than that, it has terrible recoil, terrible spread, a terrible walk speed. It's like a FAMAS with a tiny, tiny one tap range, but it has extreme recoil and you can buy like two and a half FAMASs. Just buy FAMAS, bro. Do not ever buy the M249. It's not worth it. Then we have the M4A1. Honestly, I don't know if I should put the M4s in the top tier because if you can't pick up an AK, yeah, they're the best gun you can pretty much have, but I'll probably put them top of great. And I'd say overall, I don't know which one is better. The M4A4 and the M4A1, it's so hard to say which of the two is better. I'd say overall a little bit more towards the M4A4 because I feel like a lot of the scenarios where the M4A1 is really, really good, the M4A4 can do it almost as good and then the M4A4 has scenarios where it's way better. The M4A4 has better fire rate, better range, uh, a bigger magazine, more reserve ammo, but it doesn't really four hit kill that often to the body, but you can just hit one body, one head, and it's very good. The recoil is higher, but the M4A1S, I do prefer it a lot of the time, but the M4A4 is great for holding off rushes. The M4A1S, if people aren't like medium range and rushing you, you can probably kill like two people, but the M4A4, I feel like you can kill nearly the entire team. But the fact that the M4A1 is just super, super accurate, I do prefer to use it usually, but it's really personal preference, but I'd say the M4A4 is actually better. The M4A1 costs less. Uh, I don't know, dude. I'd say overall, actually, I'd, I'd switch them. There's so many times when I have to like, you know, buy extra utility or I can't even buy armor and helmet if I'm going to be going for the M4A4. So yeah, I'd say the M4A4 is actually a slightly better gun, but because of the price, the M4A1 is going to be better. Equip them both though. They're very, very good. Next up, the MAC-10. I'd put the MAC-10 probably slightly behind the Galil. The MAC-10 is a great gun. It has a great kill reward. The Running accuracy is ridiculously good. The fire rate is pretty high. It's not the highest of any of the SMGs, but it is very up there. It's 800, which is only 57 behind the MP9, which we'll talk about the MP9 in a minute. I'd say overall, this is a great gun as well. The Galil is going to be better, but this does give you more money and it costs less money. You can buy it on a second round force, even if you didn't get any kills. As long as you didn't spend all of your money, if you spent like 700 of your $800 on pistol round, you can still buy this, which is ridiculous. So you just buy armor and then even if you lose, you can still get a MAC-10 and maybe do something with that because the MAC-10 is not bad at all. Next up, we have the MAG-7. I don't know if I should put this top of decent because I love this gun. I'm going to put it here. I don't know if that's really the best place to put it, but the MAG-7 is great. If you can hit a great headshot with it, it doesn't matter how you're moving. If you're jumping, as long as you're not strafing and jumping, you should be completely fine. If you jump straight up and you're close enough to the person, the gun's very, very consistent if you know how to use it. It can't one-shot body if people have armor, but it can if they don't. But yeah, go for a headshot because, you know, usually people have armor. Anyway, next up we have the MP5 SD, which I'm sorry, I think I have to put this one in awful. It has a couple of advantages over the MP7, which is right here. So we'll talk about the MP7 in a second, I guess. So here's the thing. It has, you know, a suppressor. It reloads slightly faster and then it has a little bit more walking speed. Other than that, the MP7 is better. The MP7 is more consistently not like a six hit kill. It can kill in five shots a lot better. And overall, if you want the suppressor, the MP5 is, you know, one of the suppressed guns in the game. But the MP7 is just better kind of because like the damage on this one it's only two less but on armor that makes it like do 17 instead of 20 which is ridiculous at that point it's basically like an ak versus an m4 in terms of like yeah you have to hit an extra shot now which is only one extra shot but it can be 
be a big deal, you know? But then we have the MP9. I'm putting this one in top tier. I don't know if that's controversial, but that's just how I feel. The MP9 is great. The running accuracy is great. The jumping accuracy is great. It has the fastest reload of any gun in the entire game. It has the fastest walk speed of any gun in the entire game. Maybe the best running accuracy, except like the Tech 9, but we'll get to that one soon. And it also has the fastest automatic fire rate in the entire game. And it's only 1,250 bucks. Gives you 600 bucks on a kill. If you have a T-sided map, this is basically the one thing saving you. You can play defensive. You can rush people with it. The damage itself isn't really that good at all, but it actually has, I think, the best range of any of the SMGs. It doesn't really lose its damage as much as the MAC-10 of range. The MAC-10 does do more damage, but it fires slower, it reloads slower, and it's not quite as accurate while running, but also it has less recoil, so it's kind of more accurate. The MAC-10 is better if you want to go like a little bit farther out in terms of your kills, but since you're using the MP9 on a defensive team, you can just sit behind a corner. You don't have to like rush people. Versus the MAC-10, you need that extra range in case people try to bite you at medium range, but obviously the MAC-10 won't work there, but it will work better than an MP9. If you're confused by the fact that I'm putting this higher than the M4A4, the reason for that is because of the price. It's like a third of the price. If you had infinite money, the M4A4 would be better, but you're not always going to have enough money for an M4A4. That's why this gun is overall better is because you can have it more and it's still really good. Like you can beat an M4A4 with this gun. But next up, we have the Negev. I'm going to put this one in decent. Uh, I don't know if I should put it ahead of the FAMAS, but yeah, it goes in decent. The Negev can't one-shot headshot like it used to, but yeah, it's a laser beam if you shoot it for a few seconds, and then you just kill everyone with it. It's a great CT-sided gun. It's not a very good T-sided gun, but if you're playing like Inferno, and you go to B-site, and then you throw a smoke down and just start shooting down banana, you can mow down the entire team with the gun. It's very situational, but it's very good in certain situations, and against top-level players, it won't win, but you know, if you're just playing like a regular game, you can make good work with it. I don't personally use it basically ever, but yeah, it's pretty good. Next up though, the Nova shotgun. I don't know if I should put it in decent. I personally do not like this gun, but I know a lot of people do, and I have gotten like 1v4s with it, which was fun. For some reason though, I just can't use it. I'll only hit people like 90 and 1 to the head and just die instantly afterwards. I don't know. I don't know if I should put it in there are better options, because if you're a T, unless you have enough money for an auto shotgun, there aren't better options, but the Mag 7 is just so much overall better that I don't really use this gun on the CT side. I'm going to put it in there are better options, it's not the worst gun in the game, but it really isn't the best. Next up, the P2000. I'm going to put this one. There are better options, which is the USP. It isn't necessarily worse than the USP. Next up, we have the P2000. I don't know if I should put it in top tier. I don't know if I should put it higher than the M4s. Obviously, it's not better than them. But in terms of like cost to usefulness, uh, yeah, it's going above the 5.7. The P250 is a $300 gun, though it's basically the least expensive gun in the game with the dualies. But unlike the dualies, it does 96 to the head on armor and has actually pretty good range as well. The accuracy itself is a little iffy, but it does really good damage. You can basically kill with one headshot, one body shot like an M4 can, but the M4 is over 10 times as expensive. So this is my save round gun. I buy like only this and then maybe a flashbang or something. You can buy one of these and then buy one for your teammate and still have spent less money than a Deagle. Next up, we have the P90. Uh, I'm going to put it in decent. During the beta, I was playing Ancient and it was like 11 to 12 or something we were losing and this was the most cursed game ever where we basically won like every round of the half and then lost every round of the second half and then we were about to lose and i was like everybody on the team because we had lost so many rounds in a row i was like everybody on the team my p90s and rush the open part of mid and somehow it worked and we were able to just overwhelm everybody the p90 is expensive it gives you very little money back but it is the best smg in the game it's just you know only a few hundred bucks less than an m4a1 at that point just buy an m4 but sometimes the p90 works so that's why i'm putting in decent that was a long explanation but yeah next up the pp bison i'm putting this one in awful i don't know dude it's not the worst gun in the game but i can't really recommend it under the mp5 the bison is a little bit i wouldn't say underrated it is bad but it's not as bad as people think it's still really bad though so yeah it's definitely awful it has the largest capacity of any gun in its class and any gun in most classes however it's basically an auto glock where the damage itself isn't that bad but the armor pen is terrible so don't use it unless you have an extra slot and you really just want to put this in there i wouldn't recommend this in your loadout at 
all. Same with the MP7, but maybe you could make an argument for the MP7. Next up, revolver. I don't know if I should put this in awful because people might get mad. Some people like the revolver. I'll put it in there are better options because it's the Deagle. The Deagle is the better option. The Deagle is terrible if you don't hit the head. The revolver is, I guess, slightly less terrible because you can hit him twice in the body. But the Deagle, you can do that up close if you hit the lower chest, the abdomen. Next up, we have the sawed off. And this is going to be a controversial opinion. I'm going to put it top of awful. I'm not going to put it in there are better options though because it is a really bad gun but there are like three ways that it actually becomes really good first off connector and overpass sit in there and then let your team go B. everybody from mid to connector is going to go down and you're just going to hit him in the body and hit him in the body then we have the scar and i wouldn't recommend you use this but i'm going to put in decent because it is a very good gun objectively speaking but again, don't use it. It's kind of the rule in this game that you're not supposed to use it. It reloads faster than the G3. It has a tiny bit more recoil, but it has a faster reload speed and it's on the defending team, which makes it pretty good for holding angles. So you can kill the entire team by just dink, dink, dink because it two shots to the body and one shots to the head to basically any range. And it can one tap to the body, but I'll talk about that in my sniper video. Don't use it, like I said, but if you are gonna use it, it is a decent gun, but please don't use it because you will get kicked. Your own team will probably start screaming at you. Next up though, we have the SG55 three i really don't know why you'd ever use this gun other than the fact that it is kind of brain dead easy when you compare it to the ak-47 and i talked about that in my rifle video the recoil pattern is really goofy but i put it a little bit under no i don't know if it's better than the aug the aug does fire faster it just has such a slow fire rate i don't know i'd probably put it slightly below the aug but don't use either of them just don't even have them in your loadout next up though we have the scout i'm gonna put it in great but the bottom of great it is definitely up there on decent but i'd say it's bottom of great the scout is in a weird spot where, yeah, you can one-tap people to the head, but maybe an automatic gun that could do that is better. And also the deagle can one-tap to the head, so when you hit body shots, the rifles are better, and if you hit headshots, the deagle is less expensive. But overall, this gun can destroy people. It does have one-tap body potential, which is something I will talk about in my sniper video. But if people have armor, go for the head. Maybe two shots to the body, but try to go for the head on this one. It fires faster than an op. It has double the magazine capacity now, so it's really good. And it also has 90 reserve ammo. And and also, you walk at full speed while aiming, which is crazy. You walk at basically SMG speed while aiming down sights, which makes peaking really good with this gun as well. Next up, we have the Tech 9, and I put this one probably... Ah, it's such a weird gun. I don't know. I'd probably put it a little bit above the Scout, but it's lower than the 5.7. The Tech 9 is the same price as the 5.7. It does a little bit more damage, but the hits to kill is the same because it's not that much more damage. It has a smaller magazine. It has way more weird recoil where it kind of just goes all over the place versus mostly just up but it is the highest accuracy while running gun in the entire game it is basically perfectly accurate while tapping when you're running which makes medium range kills on people with armor and helmet kind of doable and you know 500 bucks is pretty cheap as well i'd say the 5.7 is a little bit better because you can actually you know just play more stationary and spam more with it versus the tech 9 is mostly a tapping gun but it is very good for that so it is a little bit lower but it's pretty much as good. Next up, you got the UMP. Uh, yeah, this gun is awful. I don't know. It's not good. The UMP, it has the highest base damage of any of the SMGs, and the armor pen isn't too bad, but basically the only way that they had to nerf this gun to make it terrible and everybody stopped using it is that they made the range like... 0.75 or something maybe 0.85 but really bad they made it really 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 bad this gun is like a eight or nine hit kill over range and it is terrible i'll talk about it in my smg video which will be the next after my sniper video because so many people have been requesting that but please do not use this gun it's not good it reloads like slower than a rifle it has terrible range the only conceivable way that this gun could be better than like a mac 10 or an mp9 is if the range was better because the up close damage is fine but the fire rate is really really low so you'd expect it to be like a medium range ish smg where it's kind of more like a rifle and it used to be like that it used to be really good in fact but they basically just made the range so bad that it's not good for that anymore so it's not really good for anything a little bit better than an mp5 because it's 300 bucks less and the mp5 basically just has a better version of it which is the mp7 but then we have the usp and i'm actually going to put this one in decent and that's because of a few reasons first off on pistol round it one shots basically all ranges almost the same range as a deagle or a p250 would even when it's not a pistol round it still does 70 to the head and can kill with two headshots on fully armored people it can't kill with one head one body but it's good enough the magazine capacity isn't great but the reload time is pretty fast and i love the reload animation as well it's got a great reload animation not that that actually matters but it is cool and yeah overall it's not the best gun in the game for sure but it's a free pistol it has way better overall usefulness than the glock because the glock is great on pistol round 
and nothing else. But this is actually good on pistol round as well, maybe better than a Glock, and then actually pretty all right on non-pistol rounds. And then last up, we have the auto shotgun, and I'm gonna put this one probably between the M4s and the Galil. The weird thing about the P90 is that since it's the most expensive SMG, and it's kind of more like a rifle, I guess, they decided to give it only a $300 kill reward instead of 600. But with the auto shotgun, they're like, nope, it gives you $900, same as a sawed off would for some reason. And if you kill two people, it basically pays for itself and it will kill two people. It is a little bit finicky to use at first because unlike the other shotguns, you can't really move around with this one as much. It also has less pellets. It does a little bit less damage, but don't let that fool you because it has an 80% armor pen, which is more than an M4 or even I think an AK. Like it has crazy armor penetration, which basically means hit them once in the head, they will die. Okay, hit them once in the head, hit them twice in the body, it'll kill them. Reloads one shell at a time, but has a really nice reload speed. It's less expensive than a FAMAS. It is a great gun. The auto shotgun is becoming a gun that people do like to use more and more. It will mow your entire team down if the guy is pretty good. Anyways, let me know your opinions on this tier list down in the comments, talking about how good they are and how often you can also buy them and when you can buy them and what team they're on. Because CS is not just about what gun is the best. It's not Call of Duty where you can have every gun selected. Some guns are objectively worse than other guns but are better because they cost less. That's my tier list. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Have a nice day.